all, and welcome to Eternal Dirtles. I'm your host, Zach Clark, and with me as always, Phil Blackman. Phil, how's it going, man? Bro, it's going good. Uh, what is on the docket? Because I played myself some ninjas, my guy. Oh, if we, we definitely got to talk about ninjas. If we want to do a little follow-up, I definitely played some ninjas. I can tell you about my brew. That way uh, people uh, aren't don't think that I uh, am just spouting nonsense when I say, hey, try new things. I am a, I'm a man that follows my own advice. To a degree. Yeah. So and, let's, uh, yeah, let's, uh, so let's, sweet, man. let's talk about a couple things here. So new business, we've got uh, a, a bit of new, uh, a bit of new equipment. We're working on uh, making the podcast look and sound a little bit better. Um, hopefully you guys can all see that. Um, then uh, we also want to talk about, uh, this is a pet topic of mine. It has been for a while. Cards that need to be unbanned that we just think, you know, that we can unban these cards. We don't need to see, see these cards banned anymore. The, the power level of these cards has been surpassed by and far by several other things. And then uh, I, I should say, first, uh, let's talk about uh, your ninjas deck. So, yeah, so th this is more so, more so than talking specifically about my brew. This was something where I wanted to put what we talked about last week in action. Uh, and then the results thereof, which um, next week you'll see on 90s MTG, I have a couple of rounds recorded with the deck. Uh, there are three rounds uh, that I played at the local with a, a blue-white ninjas deck. And I'm going to talk about some of the card choices that I made, put it into the structure that we talked about last week. And then uh, we've already had some people on the Discord asking about uh, their ideas for how they can fit into that similar deck building structure and how that has sort of helped them. And they're talking with us, which is great. Definitely yeah. hop in if you want to do that. Dude, hop into the Discord. Definitely. If you're, if you're watching right now, you should hit the link below. Get into the Discord. Uh, we have a lot of fun talking about uh, decks there. So the uh, Blue White Ninjas deck that I played was I played uh, the new Mo Moon Circuit Hacker, which when it ETBs off of a uh, ninjutsu for a single blue, it draws a card. And then every time it hits thereafter, if it didn't enter the battlefield that turn, it's a looter. So yep. it's a Ninja of the Deep Hours when it ETBs, it's a Merfolk looter after. Um, and then I also played Ninja of the Deep Hours. So I had a suite of eight ninjas that all draw a card, right? That was yeah. that was my ninjas thing. And then I played it alongside fairies. And it's very similar to the popper builds. I was playing uh, Spell Stutter Sprite. I played four Brazen Borrower, and I'll talk about why in a second. And then the the I, I also played uh, four Thousand Face Shadow, uh, which is also a new card from Kamigawa. That one was a little bit lackluster, and but I, I learned from it, and uh, I can explain why I chose it. But the real uh, card that tied the room together was I played four Fairy Guide Mother. Now, Fairy Guide Mother is not a legacy playable card. For those of you who don't know, it's from uh, Eldrain. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer for, for white, and then it has adventure for one and a white at sorcery speed to give a creature plus two, plus one, and flying. Now, that is by no means a legacy power level card, but let me explain why, okay. in the deck building construction, why Fairy Guide Mother actually ties the room together nicely as plan C. Yeah, I was going to say, this sounds like a C power card, right? Yeah, it, it is It is in the, the C, C plan C card, card, yeah. Goes. So the the crux of the deck, if I I, I as, assumed the position that the ninjas, particularly Moon Circuit Hacker, is the legacy power level thing to do, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just committed to the idea. Of, I want to make see if I can make ninjas happen. So let's assume that ninjas is legacy power level. Well, we'll assume case, that. We'll assume that. <laughs> So if that's the case, the thing that you want to be doing, and the reason why I don't really like the blue-black builds as much, is I think that the power of ninjutsu isn't that you're getting the mana cheat on the creature, because the creatures themselves aren't that impressive. If you look at any of the blue-black ninjas or any of the blue ninjas, none of them are very good. They're all like two power beaters on the ground. Yeah, you know? and, like and best case scenario, you may have cheated mana, but you still put another creature back in your hand, which is not cheating mana. Which you paid the mana for, right? So, yeah. like, it's it's less so the 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 mana cheat, so to speak, on ninjutsu, and it's in my opinion more so the value that you get in picking something up. So, whatever you're picking up, I think is where the value of ninjutsu actually is. Right on. So that's where I think that, like, in you know, at least uh, you see it in Popper as a, a mainstay. But that's where picking up spell stutter sprite is really valuable, right? Of you're course. Picking up power yep. spells that is actually a card that is like tier two in power level. Like, it's not legacy power level, but it's not. You, it's also not embarrassing, right? Like, Are you picking up Snapcaster Mages, Phil? No Snapcaster Mages. <laughs> Fair. So, 
but the, you still do need a series of enablers to turn your ninjas on, right? Like the, the, the deck requires that you do play the stuff that you can pick up. And ideally you want it to be stuff that you can play on turn one. And then with Moon Circa Hacker or Blue Ninja of the Deep Hours, you can pick up on turn two, right? So you can start ninjaing on turn two and then keep that train going. And then that's how you're going to accrue advantage because you're, you're, you're drawing cards over time. So uh, similar to uh, Spell Stutter Sprite, is also Brazen Borrower, right? So Brazen Borrower, it's just a piece of removal that can hit anything. It's a flash threat that flies, so it'll be able to ninja to in. But then when you pick it up, it's a high value target to pick yeah. up. This so is Trust Utter Sprite and, and, and uh, Brazen Borrower, both of which are fairies, are really good pickups. Like they fill that B slot really well. I can interact on the stack. I can interact on the board. They're both fairies, so it works with Spell Stutter Sprite. This is like we're seeing where the cohesion is coming together. Yeah. But now I also need enablers. Well, in my mind, I was going to play Thousand Face Shadow, which I did as a 1-1 flying ninja that has a big payoff on the back end if you if you can get there. And the uh, I need I still wanted another enabler. And I was like, well, it's probably Fairy Seer, right? Like, that's probably the go-to pick. It's a fairy. It has a good ETB to help set up to find your ninjas on turn two. But when I wanted white, specifically because I wanted Source to Plowshares, because I want ways to keep the board clear to keep my ninjas going through, and Source to Plowshares is, in my opinion, the, the stock of Source to Plowshares is at an all-time high. Yeah. Agreed. That I looked, I looked towards other enablers that maybe were in white, and I found Fairy Guide Mother. Now, Fairy Guide Mother uniquely fits with everything that both the fairies and the ninjas want. It's a 1-1 flyer, which enables ninjas on turn two. It's uh, the sorcery is plus two, plus one in flying, which means that you can push your ninjas through and then recast it as a one, one flyer to continue enabling further ninjas that you've drawn off your cards. And it's a fairy, which works with spell stutter sprite. So it yeah. oddly tied the room together in all of the ways that I wanted. And it actually proved to be pretty solid. Now the issues with the deck war that it kind of gets outclassed by bigger creatures. If they are not outclassed by bigger creatures, I'm sorry. It gets outclassed when they go wide. So I, I struggled heavily against elves. I struggled heavily against uh, goblins, which I played both of uh, that <laughs> night. Jeez. And, and both of them, it's like I lost the game because they presented like a board of five creatures, right? And if I'm yeah. on two, two ones and two twos, I, I'm not going to be able to get there. And Brazen Borrower and Source of Plushers don't do well against a board that goes wide of incidental creatures that don't matter, right? Yeah, it's like, of course. I, I, can't, I can't beat an empty the Warrens. But it, what, what it showed me, though, is now... I found explicitly where the weakness of the deck is. And if I take the deck for another spin, I'm definitely going to have many an answer to boards that go wide because against boards that go tall uh, or at, on individual threats, it was fairly easy. Like playing against Blue Red Delver or, or um, I played against Burn, both of those matchups were pretty solid in terms of my interaction lining up with theirs. Yeah, of course. A source of plowshares and a brazen borrower lining up against one one threats is really good. And then being able to go up uh, against uh, Blue Red Delver, the ninjas, you know, actually outpace uh, expressive iteration pretty heavily. Not to mention, you know, bouncing a Merc Tide probably feels really good. Swordsing a Merc Tide is fine, you know. Doing all that stuff, but then also Spell Stutter Sprite is at a premium in those matchups where you're going to catch half their deck. And yeah. if you pick it back up, exactly. you are essentially locking them under a spell. And then you also can just be like, well, none of your stuff matters until uh, as long as I protect a ninja. Because if you want to trade your ninja or uh, your threat with my ninja, that's fine because that's going to clear the way for future ninjas where you're on individual threats and I'm on synergy. So yeah. it ended up lining up really well. But th that's just an example of how when I'm saying that like there's room to explore – you uh you know tune into 90s mtg next week uh with chris benucci uh he's going to have those matches on it'll show you an example of how that archetype is under unexplored as there are many archetypes unexplored and it's just a matter of figuring out the tools that really help what you think the power level thing to do is and uh we'll we can follow up then and get some feedback from it but I, yeah. I, 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 it was definitely solid. And I, I'm, I'm interested in taking it for another spin because let me tell you, uh, ninjas, the gameplay of ninjas is just fun. Like the, yeah. the tension. It sounds great. Like, it sounds like a blast. I, you, as somebody who's played Infect, you would yeah. love playing ninjas. I, I, 100%. <laughs> because when, when, when every single position starts with, okay, attack you, and it's just open mana on both sides. Of the and you're board. just, yeah, you're just like, what are you going to do? Do you want to block this guy? Do you want to, do you want to try and kill it while, while I'm attacking? Yeah, that sounds great. The, the tension was high at all times and it was, they, they were really engaging games. So, and there has uh, to be something said for like, people just don't 
know what they're playing against you know like that's that's you know a, a full yeah, thing that, that actually that caught one of my opponents so i played a fairy guide mother on turn one i ninja it back on turn two drew a card and then when i attacked again on the following turn they didn't block because they thought i could guide mother because they assumed that guide mother was an instant but it turns out they actually did have some amount of restraint in l drain whatever amount that was and uh it's a sorcery so i yeah. i got in i got in some damage <laughs> so, but but all in all i i like I think if I were to go back to the deck, it's it's really a fairies deck that happens to have ninjas in it, as opposed to the other way around. Um, and so I would cut the thousand face shadows. I'd add in fairy seers. You're really a solid uh, fairies deck that then pays off with ninjas. But uh, yeah, interesting interesting stuff. But let's get into uh, unbanning some cards. Yes, let's. Let me just fix something real quick here. Do we want to talk about Luris? Man, should we talk about Luris? I, I, I saw, I heard a, a good comment. Um, I think it was Aspiring Spike who I was watching, um, but he made a comment where, and we've made this comment before too, where we were like, uh, just have, compa- just remove companions. Just remove the mechanic companion. <laughs> just say mechanic companions are not allowed. The companion does not cards. exist as a mechanic in Magic the Gathering. Anymore. Right. Yeah. And he, and he said, uh, because the, it is printed on the card, even though we errata all the time, if you just say you can't play with a companion, you can't play with this mechanic that is printed on the card. Uh, a little bit of whataboutism, but I, I can see the point. Is <laughs> yeah, I mean, then what, then why don't you just remove anti from all the cards, right? And then you can play with the right, anti that, cards. And that, that was the point. He was like, what, what What if you said we are unbanning Golgari Grave Troll, but you can't dredge it. You can only play it as a creature, but you can't dredge Golgari Grave Troll. Well, he's like that, that. That 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 would be the argument of removing companions. Sure, and it's like, and and, and I can see it. It's not a. Like, I mean, I think I think the answer to that is stop making broken cards that are also like completely like different than anything else out there that offer a playstyle that people don't normally see. I think you want to explore a new territory. I I can I can yeah. commend them. Taking no, I'm saying like t- take that take that risk, but then don't print it on a n- new type of card too. You know, like. Adding yeah. Loris, Loris is something that you don't see in the re- like. There's nothing like that in the re- in the rest of Magic: The Gathering. That's why people are playing it. They want to have access to that to that effect, right? But uh, because it's on a broken mechanic as well, that that causes problems. So then, when you ban it, you lose that really cool mechanic that people do want to play with. Yeah, they they did really ham fist everything into Companion to make it as broken as they possibly yeah. could on the first pass. I, I I would be curious to sit in. Uh, a design meeting at Wasi where they're trying to figure out, okay, we're doing something new and we want to push it because we want it to be exciting, but then actually figuring out where the threshold of power level is in their testing, because they get it wrong a lot. They got it wrong with vehicles on the first try. They got it wrong with companions on the first try. I, I, the, the idea that every new mechanic has to be as pushed as possible to be exciting to sell cards while balancing that with not breaking anything, if you haven't done it before, I'd be curious to see where they're like, we, we really want to go all the way. Because there were so many knobs that could have been fixed, and you know we, we're not going to get into them. But there are so many knobs that could have been fixed on companions that they decided not to put the, yeah. uh, the shackles on. That I wonder where their, their stop gaps are, or if they're just in a space of like, no, fucking go all the way, and then we'll fix it on, we'll fix it in the other, you know, when we come back around to it. If I, my interview all. with Chris Cox says that uh, he, he was looking to push. He was like, we're, we're going to ban more stuff. It's going to happen. And we're just going to keep doing, doing design the way we do it. And uh, we'll make, we'll make adjustments as we go. So I think, I think the answer is they don't do it. They don't do enough testing. Yeah. I really do wonder if that, if, if Cox's position, because he was looking at it from, you know, running the company as opposed yeah. to what's you got to keep it exciting. I totally get that. You got to keep it exciting. Yeah. I, I, I think that the, the power creep is uh, they, they, they do, they should tone it down in on new things. Uh, if they haven't explored it and they're worried, I think if you're worried, it's like, you want to take the risk, but at the same time, you don't want to bust it. And then the bands happen. It's really interesting. The Stockholm syndrome that it, it shows up is like, I feel like if, if when Luris got banned and then everybody is like, finally, this is so great three drops are unbanned and we can play with all these other cards that were soft banned because Luris was too yeah. good. I feel like if you have such a, a, a huge crowd cheering to remove one of the toys that you made for them, it's not good. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, I think, I think they're in a good spot now 
with uh with that design philosophy where it's like at least in in terms of uh like top down design like ninjas and samurais kamigawa champions betrayers you know uh that that didn't sell well right but kamigawa blade runner is selling great you know like i think people really like really like that that and that's a good risk like that's a risk where like people could have really really hated this idea but it worked you know like i think overall and there are plenty of people who who will disagree with me um that they hate the idea of like mechs and gundams and stuff i I think overall it's fine you know like i i I think that that uh at the end of the day like we'll see this is just another phase of like magic the gathering that happened and it won't be that controversial i think the stuff that will eventually become pushed like to, to where people have have issues with that sort of stuff is like if they if they start just going magic the gathering pokemon the set you know like that's when people will get upset yeah i mean honestly i would i would love to play some hitmonchan in uh <laughs> in mtg but so i i i will say that i think that one of the um things that really stuck out to me about playing ninjas this past week uh from a broader sense and particularly why kamigawa was so exciting beyond just it being a flavor home run was the mechanic of ninjutsu felt both compelling and rewarding in gameplay because I had to work for it. And then the result of working for it, which was drawing a card, which is exceptionally powerful or drawing multiple cards. If I'm getting two ninjas down, like the payoff versus the work felt worthwhile and rewarding when it happened. And it, it was just more emotional of a game. Like it was more exciting to play because I was, I had a goal and I was trying to achieve that goal. And then when I achieved it, the success felt worth it. It felt worth the journey. And I think that that's, a, in, in card design, I think that's really where the, the, the cards that I noticed that people don't like are the ones that pay themselves off. So uh, the best, most recent example is Ragavan, right? Ragavan paid itself off. It drew the card and made the mana for the card. Um, a, a good uh, comment that I saw was from, I, I I want to say it was Murph, but I don't remember if that was his name. I'm sorry if it's not, but from Command Zone. And he had shared, I might have talked about this before, but he shared two legends. He shared the new Mardu legend from Kamigawa. of the two attack phases? Yeah. So or something? Yeah, it doubles attack triggers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, he shared that legend, and he shared it alongside Urza Lord High Artificer. And he said, this design, talking about Ishin, is way more interesting. It's way, than com- way more compelling. Design, yeah, for sure. Because, so like, Essentially, because Urza has the payoff on it, the five mana tap and, and temporal ap- uh, temporal aperture, I think is what the card is. But the effect of just paying five mana and spinning the wheel and, and getting a card off the top, which means yeah. that it's a, it's its own mana sink. It makes a ton of mana and then it's own, it pays itself off. Yeah, exactly. You, you, don't, you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to work for it. It's just there for you. You, you just, just put it. you just put that card in your deck, uh, as, especially as a commander when you have access to it at all times, and and yeah, things and, are happening right. Whereas with Ishin, it's like a really compelling mechanic to try and work for. And then if you are, if you can pay it off, you are rewarded for working for it. So there's, there is, so it's less so like, it's not that it's an argument against power level. It's an argument against play experience, right? If Urza was like, okay, here's a construct. So you get your value. And you also have all of this mana now, if you've done any sort of uh, construction towards artifacts, well, how are you going to pay off all that mana now? Like yeah. that, that is where it's like, you're, you know, when we're thinking in ABC, it's like if, if ABC is built into one card, the play experience is redundant and boring. And that's a lot of where I, like when I saw that comment, the first thing I thought of was Uro. And I was like, yeah, the card does it all. Does by it all, itself. does everything. Yeah. It asks nothing of you other than to just play cards by escaping it into uh, back into play. Yeah. So, but like, let's say if, if Uro didn't have escape, but it was this powerful three mana thing. It's like, oh, well, maybe I want to play black for unearth to bring it back. Or, or I want to find other ways that, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm spitballing now, but like the idea that you have to work for your payoffs is a rewarding experience. And I think design should lean into that because if you can pay that off with a powerful enough effect, then that becomes like, I want to play ninjas again. I'm the miracles guy. And I want to play with creatures again. Yeah. You know how difficult that is? No, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But that's I mean, exciting, I, I, you know? I'll say I'll say they've been doing, especially in Commander, they've been doing a really good job giving us compelling uh, legends to like build around. Uh, I, I Phil, I don't know. You obviously don't know this because you don't play Commander with me. But I've built four decks over the past like two weeks 
Like Dude, so I much fun. I, I've got like Shurikai. I've got uh, uh, what's it called uh, the Sephiris, the like dungeon reanimator one from uh, the set from yeah. a while ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just from D D. Yeah, it's just like uh, I I pulled out Brea and turned it into a vehicles deck. Like I oh, nice. I'm having a a blast building building stuff right now because they're putting out compelling cards that are fun to play with. And uh, offer, like, a cool way to build decks. That's why I brought up Shurikai in the last cast. Because I was like, th- not only is this does this card feel powerful, but it feels really fun. And uh, it offers something that, like, I mean, in the deck that I have that, you can play Wrath of God. And it, like, doesn't get rid of your commander. That's cool. That only happened before when you had a Planeswalker commander. Now you have this thing that's ostensibly a creature. But it's not for m- from the intents and purposes when you build a deck around it, right? Like if you're going to wrath a God and your commander isn't a creature, that's a distinct advantage you have. Mm. Yeah. You honestly, the, uh, and you just made me think speaking of commander, I, I haven't played it in a while. I, I have Guafa Hazid. Yeah. Guafa. It's Guafa. It's Guafa's world. We're just living in it. It, it literally has no win conditions. It, it just tries to outlast the table by playing politics. But, uh, the, the Loris band maybe want to just build Loris CDH. Yeah, true, true. Just make, right. make that make anyway, sense. So let's I, let's, let's get to oh, before go on. we do. You, you should share your EDH decks on Moxfield. Indeed, indeed. I, in fact, I do. All of my EDH decks are on Moxfield. That's actually how I started uh, using Moxfield. Is uh, my buddy Harry and my buddy John created the site, and they were like, "You should just use this for all your deck lists." And I went on it, and I was like, "This is amazing. This looks so good." Uh, and and I. I know, I know I've said this a thousand times, but it works on mobile. You don't need an app. You don't have to download an app. It works right on your web browser on your on your mobile phone. And it works well. Uh, your iPad, you know, obviously it works on PC or Mac, duh. But like the the site is just so usable and so easy to do. I really wish, you know, when we were griping about uh, Star City Games uh, Con and how their deck list situation was just like terrible. I really wish they would have just used Moxfield instead. It would have been so much easier. Yeah, and speaking speaking of, uh, I'm actually going to upload for everyone who would like to see ah, the blue white down here deck somewhere. Yeah, it, it's it'll be in the deck in the description. I'll, I'm uploading the blue white uh, ninjas deck that I played, so you can get a sense of that. I'll leave um, only the sideboard cards that I wouldn't cut. Uh, because I will be adding things to yeah. help with decks that go wild. Other, other things to say, it. other things to say about uh, about Moxfield. It works through Scryfall. Uh, they offer f- like every format. I even got them to d- to add in pre modern. So if you're a pre modern fan, you should be on there sharing your pre modern decks. Uh, we've got old school on there, which is another format that I I like had them get on before uh, Scryfall was was on it. So I just you should you should be using Moxfield for sure. Uh, sign up at the link below. It's free. You can't beat free as far as th- that's concerned. And just just mess around with it. You're going to see that it's better than than all the other deck list sites out there. I agree. And uh, I'm, I'm using it as we speak. And boy, howdy, is it great. Yep. All right. Uh, so let's talk about cards we want to see unbanned. This is what you guys came here for. This is what you clicked on the, clicked on the link with my uh, necro, Necropotence thumbnail. Uh, is is in the in the like 20 23 minute mark uh so that we can talk about uh cards we'd like to see unbanned uh, i actually sent phil a list uh through moxfield uh so we're just gonna go over that list uh start to finish just boop, that way um i'm gonna rely on you phil to to read these cards because i don't have uh because i'm trying to maintain a uh decent looking uh thing i don't have the card uh right in front of me to show it's so a uh, literate yeah, it is a good thing you're literate. Um, and we'll have them pop up over here. Let's start with Hermit Druid. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, Hermit Druid is a one and a green for a one one. It has green tap, reveal the top cards of your library into you. You reveal a basic land card, put that card into your hand, and all the rest of the reveal cards into your graveyard. So, it's a combo card of all. Yeah, of- let's talk about why it's banned first, right? Yeah, go for it. So, why it's banned is because people do things like get rid of every card in their. Uh, library and then play like Thassa's Oracle, or I guess at the time it was Lab Maniac, um, or they, they just find ways to exploit that uh, that ability, right? Yeah, pr- pretty easy to not play basic lands in your deck. Yeah, I, I almost never do. <laughs> so this card, I mean, 
nowadays, this card is a two mana one one that if it untaps, it will flip it will flip the library, right? Sure. So it's 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 oops off spellish. We have cards that do this already between uh balustrade spy and the uh other version of that card in oops. And then yeah. we also have something similar in um what's the 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 one 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 in a black uh card that is used in with Asa Oracle combo sometimes? Uh tainted pact. Not well tainted pact too, but there's the creature. Oh, I I don't know off the top of my head. I'll look it up. I'll look it yeah. up. There's a there's a, there's a, there's also a oh uh, divinating uh, it's divining Divi divining witch or, witch or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the it's the uh, oh what's the name of that card? Uh, come on, demonic consultation on a stick card from uh, Mercadian masks, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you exile like six cards from your deck, and then you keep revealing until you reveal the named card. And what you do exactly. is you just like have a Thassa's Oracle. You so exile your whole library, and then. So that card's already like it's two it's two mana and it costs one to tap that and I think you discard a card. So the only real difference there is you have to discard a card. You have to have a card in your hand. Yeah, it, it, um, it's close. So it's literally it's the same the card. Same. It exists already, um, and all it would really be doing is adding some amount of uh, like resiliency and and uh, redundancy to to that style of deck. And it's not that powerful, man. It's really not yeah, that it, powerful. Here, here's something that like, I, I do. I, it was it's banned like 10 years ago, right? Like I get why 10 years ago that would have been a problem, but we have so many ways to deal with it now. Yeah, as we talk about these cards, one thing that we should also note is it, part of the discussion as we're figuring out if these cards could come off is, is the play experience that they would offer worth them coming off for? Like it may not be powerful enough, but is the experience worthwhile? Now for this one, there, there are so many cards that are similar to it but it also means, do we want to prop those kinds of decks up right now? I mean, it's possible. I, I'm yeah. just saying, like, as, as people are... It's a good question to ask, for sure. Out, like, yeah, yeah. It, it's like, okay, yes, there is the theoretical Fast Oracle deck with Divining Witch and, and, and Paradigm Shift or whatever. And if they get Hermit, uh, Hermit Druid, it's like, okay, yeah, there's going to be a blue-green deck with Veil of Summers or whatever that they get to play. And it's possible that it's just another incidental combo deck and it maybe is fun. It maybe doesn't do anything. Maybe it does. Who knows? But is that something that we even care to do. Uh, it's similar to the argument of when World Gorger Dragon came off, right? It's like, well, World Gorger Dragon just makes a sort of infinite loop combo deck that is pretty much reanimator and it's uh, it's it's cute and can be fun sometimes. And it's kind of meme -y, but kind of interesting, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and it has- It really just offers thing. like a totally different style of reanimator deck too. Yeah, I mean, I would say that Hermit Druid in my mind falls close to what World Gorger is where it, will allow you to play a, a, a certain kind of deck, but it's just going to be a worse version of what that deck is trying to do. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you, you could play Hermit Druid and then try and Thassa's Oracle somebody or Oops All Spells somebody, but Oops All Spells is going to do that better and Doomsday is going to Thassa's Oracle better. I guess also I wanted to, I, I should have started with this. I, I wrote this to Phil uh, about this episode. Uh, quick disclaimer. If your reason why keeping these things on the res uh, on the ban list is because they're reserved, you get to put the dunce cap on and uh, go go sit in the corner uh, like you just asked like a question for Ben Stein's money uh, well, for your answer. If that's the case, then I am on the bandwagon to unban Shaharazad. Yeah, I mean me, for sure. Get that back <laughs> in here because I but, the most the most elegant combo of all time is just infinitely decking your opponent in the sub games all the way back up but, to decking them in the main game. Oh, it is. But here's perfect. here's my here's my <laughs> argument about 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 why that that shouldn't like be in uh, your argument. Like the the reserve list like this is reserved so you should never be unbanned. That shouldn't be an argument here because this is like theater of the mind's eye. We're saying right, duels. In, in in a yeah, un, yeah, sure, band duels, right? Uh, no, but like this is this is a at, at the very least a thought experiment. No one's really listening to Phil and I about whether or not this is a good idea. So it it really just comes down to this is a design a, a game designer like mind uh, experiment, right? So saying like it's too expensive to unban things is a cop out because these effects, whether or not uh, WotC says that they'll ever print some of these effects ever again, these effects can be reprinted. And at any point in time, they can decide that the that that doesn't the reserve list doesn't exist or whatever, or like they can print an off color version like they did with Harmless Offering and donate. So just let's let's all be cool and not do the like type in the comments like it's on the reserve list. That's the reason why. Come on, 
Let's all yeah, go they, up a bit. Reserve list says that you can't have a functional reprint of a card. Like they can't print a functional reprint of a card on the reserve list. They literally print a harmless uh, offering. What's the function uh, functionality there? It's blue and not, it's red and not blue. <laughs> it's red and not blue. So it's yeah. it's not it's not the same card. It's so different. The, the, with, with this one, you would never see blue cards in red, in red decks and vice versa. That's just right. something that, that, that never the happens. It, though, the way around it, though, is literally it's a different color, right? Like, it's not the same card. It's a different color. This yeah. one, they could literally be like, yeah, it's exactly the same, except it's an 0-2 instead of a 1-1, and it's a different card. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it's, the, the, it's, it's pretty easy. But I, 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 I agree that, like, the, the reserve list shouldn't be a... Yeah. Uh, an argument against something coming off. That said, if you want to type that in the comments about the reserve list, it, it helps. It helps traction. So go ahead and type in the comments about the reserve list, guys. I'll, you know, we'll talk about that. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll respond. Zach, um, Zach will die on this hill. Don't. don't I, I, I will. I will definitely die on this hill. That said, uh, let's go to the next card. It's Imperial Seal. Uh, Imperial Seal is a one black is a single black for a sorcery that allows you to search your library for any card, put it on top of it and you lose two life. So it's a sorcery speed vampiric tutor. Uh, this card is extremely expensive. So uh, <laughs> definitely come at Zach in the comments for this one. Um, yeah. Um, this one, this one at white border is 15 hundo. So yeah. good luck with and, that. And, and why is it banned? I think it only exists in white border, Phil. Uh, and, and why it's banned is because I guess it would be good in storm decks. Like, I don't know, man. Storm can do better things with uh, other cards. Like, Infernal Tutor's better than this, technically, in, in the Storm deck. I don't see Storm, like, winning more. Storm can already win on the on turn one if it needs to, right? Like, being able to waste a card to waste a turn to draw the specific card you need is not something that, in my opinion, is, like, legacy value anymore. Like, do, doing all that stuff doesn't doesn't... It just doesn't tie the room together in, in Legacy anymore. It's good, for sure. And I think that uh, people would play this card, but I don't think that it's something that, like, I'd be like, oh, it's so unfair that you got to, like, do a sorcery speed Vampiric Tutor. And Vampiric Tutor is banned. I think that the, as an instant speed uh, thing, it should be banned because you can do it in a turn, get the card you need, and, and, go, and go from there. So I, I understand why Vampiric Tutor is banned. I don't understand why Imperial Seal is banned. I mean, personal tutor exists in the format. It's in exactly one deck, and it's yeah. excellent in that deck uh, because it's just Doomsday is five through whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Imperial Seal is. It is also one of those things where I don't know if a single mana tutor like this is doing anything that is like it's not going to do anything healthy. What are you going to replace replace it with? You know, like what, what are you going to replace well, well, with? You like, know, well, I, I look at it this right. Like any like any card. It's similar to like Merchant Scroll, or I mean, yeah. we just talked about Personal Tutor. Those cards are never going to be doing something not broken, right? You yeah, know? like it's true. No, nobody, nobody's playing Merchant Scroll in their Faro deck to try and find answers. It, it's like Fair. I'm finding High Tide with it to kill you. Same yeah. thing with Personal Tutor. I'm finding it Doomsday to kill you. Like tutors on the whole, at least in competitive formats. In Cube, it's interesting because in Cube, uh, tutors are excellent in control decks, but yeah. In competitive formats, tutors are really just yeah. No one's no one's no one's going to cast vampiric tutor for like a supreme verdict or nobody's like playing that. burning wish to try and do something not busted. Yeah, so, that's fair. I, I mean, in, in this case, it's like imperial seal. It's like I, I agree. I don't think in power level, it's doing anything more egregious than anything else that exists. But I don't know if it coming off the ban list is actually promoting anything that would really do anything any anything good in the format. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I don't it, think it's creating it, any new deck archetypes either. So exactly. we'll, like, let's where it's, let's just Hermit say Druid. that this one's this one's a no, right? Hermit Druid, yeah. yes. Uh, Hermit Imperial Seal is a no. Decks. Hermit Druid could open up decks. Imperial Seal, not really. So I could see why it would stay off. Okay, so next, let's let's just give a shout out to all the Pox players out there and unban, unban Mind Twist, please, please, guys, please. I'm I'm on, I'm on the opposite side of the fence here. My so guy. what does Mind Twist do? Mind Twist is. <laughs> X and a black sorcery. Everybody knows what my twist does. Come on now. Target player discards X cards at random. Uh, if they do not have enough cards in, the, in their hand, they discard their entire hand. Wow. Oh, man. That extra text on there. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm on, the, I'm on the absolute opposite side of the fence on this. Every, oh, like, you, this think that, part, you think that it should be This is band? the card that talks about, like, I get it. It doesn't, like, in a format now, it's like, there is no interesting game that has ever happened from, from Mind Twist existing. Like, no, there's never been a game that's been, that's been better because Mind Twist was in it. Yeah, you haven't played enough old school. 
I, I, I fully <laughs> uh, think that this card just being a miserable experience from both players' sides of the table. Like, if I cast my, if I dark ritual and mind twist your hand, and then neither of us do anything, and I just win because I twisted you. All right, well, I didn't have fun, even though I won. You didn't have fun, obviously, because you didn't get to do anything. This card, this card's absolute fucking trash. Like, why would we ever want it back? I, I, I just think that it's. Want it back. I just think that it's a card that uh, should be uh, offered to Pox players as a thing that they can do. Pox is not that good of a deck. And if you want to uh, show up to a uh, SCG event uh, and uh, donate, you know, $50, $60 to other players, I think that you should be allowed to do that, man. Dude, if you want to play Pox, you can play eight to- <laughs> him to Turox now, you know? It's like true. I, I, I get that, you know, hey, we want to help all Pox players, but there's plenty of mono black things that you can do. You still have all of the cards from Legends that, you know, are, are trillions of dollars that uh, make games difficult to navigate and, you know, can give you the nostalgia. Mind Twist is, like, even if if you cast Mind Twist, if you spend all of your resources, if you go pedal, Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, fucking spew your entire load getting a Mind Twist onto the stack, and I just veil of summer you, we still didn't have fun. I mean, you drew a card. <laughs> <laughs> you drew a card. Okay. You did nothing. Fair enough. So you did nothing. This let's, card sucks. It just sucks. Let's 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 let's, let's, sucks. let's let's put it like this. Twist. This is a this is a this is a no from Phil and a yes from Zach. Uh, no. Hey hey, Hard mind no. twist, mind twist players, like and subscribe. Here's the, here's the thing, <laughs> for your what? For your mind Hold twist on. hot takes. Let me, let me talk to the mind <laughs> twist players for a second. I'm uh, sorry, players. box players, like and subscribe for your mind twist mind hot twist takes. Players, I need you to to just take a long hard look in the mirror. And understand that it's time to grow. It's time to evolve away from the toxicity of Mind Twist. Mind Twist is the fucking worst. It's the fucking worst. We don't, nobody wants it. Keep it gone. Get, keep it, keep it banned. Know that it is forever immortalized. Was that a system of a banned. down reference? <laughs> what, what, did I just, did I, I don't know. Toxicity. I, I just, I just, I just think Mind Twist is absolute horse shit and just should never see, should never come back. Well, I wonder how you feel about our next card then. It's Flash. I mean, Flash is just actually stone busted, but let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Flash. So it, it's one in a blue for an instant. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you do, sacrifice it unless you pay. It's a mana cost reduced by two. So if you play Flash and want to put in Imperial Recruiter, then you would have to pay one mana. One, one red after the, the you know, you'd have to, you get the ETB right. effect though, right? That's yes, the you thing. You sure do. You sure done do, Zach. Yeah. So uh, how, how did Flash get uh, banned? Uh, Protein Hulk uh, and Flash was a, was a deck back in, I think an extended, uh, all the way, all the way back then. And the idea was like, you'd get Protein Hulk and then you'd get some creatures and you'd basically have like Kiki Jiki combo or something like that happen. Uh, yeah, let, let's let's analog this. So for anyone who has ever experienced uh, turn one, Ancient Tomb, Lotus Petal, show and tell you're dead. Uh, think about that, but way better. Think if it was way better. <laughs> it's think not if, way better, if though. It was, it's think if definitely it was not way better. Think if it was that, but way better. It's only one. It's, it's one so mana better. better. It's one mana one better. Man, and there's only man, four. One mana better. <laughs> And there's only four in your deck, what? so it's not that, like you're one man. What did you? you we're, rewind the tape. Can we rewind the tape? <laughs> one mana better. One mana better. One What, dude? One mana. There's better no difference in legacy guy, between two and three mana. Come on. One one mana better is the guy she told you not to worry about. Yeah. One mana, do, do, one mana better. Do you know what one mana means? Yeah. No. I, I, look, I get that, but. What I'm saying is that what that what that's doing that two card combo for two mana, uh, it asks a lot of you. You have to have that card in your hand. You it have asks to. A lot of you. It asks you. It, it asks you to have literally one other card in your hand. That this card also works with literally anything else you'd ever want to play. So show and tell works if you put in a fatty, which is never going to do anything else because you can't put it into play. This also works with literally anything else that has an ETB or dice trigger. <laughs> like this. This is this is hot, far and away. Far and away above what is reasonably acceptable, even in the most powerful format. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Let's uh, let's consider this a no, at least from Phil, and go on to the next card. <laughs> we'll, 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 
we'll put Flash in the soft no category. Yeah, the soft no. The so, soft, a, soft no. a tender no. Okay, here's a card I think you can get behind though. Um, and that card is Skull Clamp. So do we care that Elves is already broken? I don't think we do. Like El- uh, Elves uh, can uh, already uh, draw a butt ton of cards. If they put this in their deck, are they diluting their deck even further? I think they are. They're just going to draw their point. whole deck faster. Yeah, but I, I think that I, I don't think I don't think that so one mana for glimpse, right? And then you cast a bunch of elves. They often run out of gas. Like I, I've they I've often seen they have a skull clamp. Well, this is the thing, is they have to pay that one to draw those two cards to kill to kill their guy, right? They can't just like Hermit, it, Hermit Druid makes three mana. Agreed. But they still have to get that out. And you're still stopping that deck in the exact same ways that you stop elves. That's by killing their elves and countering these spells. I don't yeah, think I, that I, this is more broken. I don't think you're going to play for Skull Clamp, for uh, Glimpse of Nature. I just don't see it happening. We can talk about one problem that now exists in the format and will forever exist in the format for the history of the rest of time. Allosaurus, right? Which is... Uh, no, Allosaurus... <laughs> Allosaurus, Allosaurus, Allosaurus Shepherd. 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 It's, it's, I'm right it's horse should have been designed. Allosaurus Shepherd should go because it's just... It's on fun gameplay. But... Yeah. This card is also tutorable off Urza Saga, and there's a whole ton of implications mm. off of being able to find a card that means every single creature for the rest of the game just draws you two cards. I don't know, man. I like the idea that like creature strategies get a little bit of a push, or you know, maybe Young Peasy comes back. I'll say this: this is one of those they've shown with Popper by unbanning Expedition Map that they are they they do pay attention when they have the resources to to look at cards and experiment with them, right? Like Expedition Map map was banned for a long time. They unbanned it. They're going to see how it goes. If they need to take uh, a recourse on it, they can. We've seen in Modern, Modern Golgari Dra- Grave Troll was banned. They unbanned it and then re-banned it. So it's not off the table. I think Skull Clamp is one, if you wanted to test the waters with a card off of this list, I think Skull Clamp, you, you could try. You could yeah. try it. Yeah, and, and Skull Clamp is not on the reserve list, right? It is not on the reserve list, but uh, reserve list aggro people still come at Zach in the comments about Skull Yeah, Clamp. please. Um, I think that Skull Clamp is obviously very good. At least there is the deck building constraint of you need to be playing some amount of bodies. I think the most egregious thing is like, it just makes it so Elves has glimpses five through eight. They will always draw their deck on turn two and call it a day. And that will be miserable. But I think it would be interesting to be like, yeah, I'm trying to like, blood gas skull clamp do some shenanigans and it's interesting like this is the uh, uh, unlike flash unlike mind twist this is a card where i could be like okay let's let's try Some things let's can happen yes yeah. let's, let's you let's might even play toes. the ninjas let's let's dip our toes in there let's let's yeah. let's just get a little feel for the skull clamp right on all right uh so let's talk about earthcraft man all these cards that would really just make elves broken i don't even know if elves <laughs> Like, this is just a card that also just makes it so that Elves on turn two is, can never lose, right? Or, or like, doesn't auto auto combo every time. It might be a little too slow, maybe. I'm definitely talking out of my ass. Like, this card's, this card's still good in exactly one deck. No, no, it would create a new deck. So let's, tell, let's talk about what Earthcraft does first. Oh, yeah, it's one in a green for an enchantment. Tap an untapped creature you control. Untapped target, basic land. Basic land, right? Basic. So you're not untapping a uh, Gaius Basic. Cradle. Not untapping the Cradle. You're just, every single cre- every single one mana creature is free for the rest of the game. But the, the reason why this card was banned is not elves. Uh, it was banned because people were putting wild gross on sacred, uh, on like, uh, on like a plains and uh, getting infinite sacred mesa tokens. Yeah, it turns out that uh, <laughs> turning every one of your creatures into an Arbor Elf uh, that can untap a thick land that's got uh, multiple mana producing options on it uh, is is quite quite the hotness for a combo. Sure, but like that's if we're using it in that manner, I don't think I'm upset. Like if you if I lose to that deck, I you you got me right now. Yeah, I think, L, I think the think elves the elf situation is probably a little bit more uh, more of an issue. Once again, Earthcraft I, in my in my view is like a card that you could try if you want to. I don't think it's going to do anything healthy for the format like it's no 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 interesting new deck is going to come out of it it's just going to be it's going to make broken shit happen i uh, i'd like to see someone someone sacred mesa at, at like the pro, the pro level 
Yeah, nobody's <laughs> nobody's going to do that because they're just going to find a, a more easy way to kill you. Uh, as sweet as Sacred Mesa is, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the thing about Earthcraft too is that it, it makes it, it it's tap and untap creature you control, so it gives every creature haste. Haste basically, to, like, yeah, yeah. Mana, uh, which is where it is broken. Like, I think now if they printed this effect now, they probably printed at like four mana. It's probably like a Lurin. Yeah. At which case, if it, if it were four mana and it was like a Lurin, and it's the it's like the top end of your deck and not both uh, fueling your deck and your payoff, it's like a Lurin's a four mana spell that when you cast it, it should end the game, and that's kind of reasonable because it's four mana. Well, they have that they have that card Cryptolith, right? Right, but it doesn't give haste, basically, right? Yeah, it gives every card every card gains the tap ability. Game so, basically is becomes a bird of paradise or something like that. Right? Yeah, I, I I could see Earthcraft if you wanted to try it. I mean, this is the one that everybody's like, "There's no way, it's totally fine." And it's just like, I, I promise you that any gameplay experience you have where Earthcraft <laughs> is on the table, it's not going to be interesting. It's going to be solitaire for one player, and that's it. Uh, but you know, if 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 our goal is to get as many of these cards off as possible, uh, I would put this on the side closer to Hermit Druid than I would to Flash. All right. Let's. Uh, we're gonna skip the the one that's next, and we're gonna talk about Oath of Druids because I want to leave the last one for uh for for the last card. Oath of Druids. Uh, everybody knows this one. One in a green for an enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep. That player chooses target player who controls more creatures than they do, and uh, is their opponent. The first player re then reveals cards off the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. If they do, that player puts it onto the battlefield and then all other cards into their graveyard. This is, to me, personally, this is worse than show and tell because you have to set it up. And it's worse than reanimator because it costs two mana. And there's only four vintage, of these in your deck. Vintage staple. Vintage uh, staple, for sure. It's, and it's a fine deck in vintage, but it's not tier one by any stretch of again, the imagination. Uh, again, I don't think... This was five years ago. This was a very good vintage deck. I don't think this is better than show and tell. I think it is uh, a pair with show and tell. Yeah, you put this in. F fine, you put this in the show and tell deck. I get that. Show and, show and tell just becomes blue green because it already has a shell for that, and it just does that, right? And it'll okay. play. It'll play the land. It, it's yeah. It's okay. that forbidden it, it, orchard. Yeah, it's it's one of those things again where it's like, yeah, you this could come off because players can play the game of like, well, I guess I have to kill the creatures you give me so you can't trigger or I have to play graph diggers cage. So you can't do this or I have to play, you know, containment priest. Or you know, my super secret this. tech uh, in vintage was against this car, this deck illness in the ranks. Yep. Yep. Make it so that, that no, no creature. All my to all the, all their, their tokens they gave me died and it was great against blue red Delver uh, that was being played. And uh, I, at the time I was a tinker deck, so I wasn't really worried about having creatures on, on board. Mm -hmm. This one having what is functionally summoning sickness before you win the game is uh, kind of attractive. It is one of those things, though, where this card, if this card came off, it just explicitly punishes creature decks. Fair decks, the decks that they're trying to push, right? I, well, that, that becomes part of the argument. I don't think any... I, 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 I hate the argument that uh, we should try and subsidize certain kinds of uh decks over others because not everybody enjoys the same things however i do think that this if if oath of druids came off it, it is again i don't know if it's promoting anything that the the format doesn't already have and i don't know if it would create any new kind of experience like if you want the fatty experience you do have show and tell yeah. uh so I mean, you already have sneak attack that like fills the role. This would kind of just like replace sneak attack because it's cheaper and you already like are happy to be in green. Uh, it means that you can trade your, you know, big bajillion dollar Eurekas for a $3 Oath of Druids. Right. But Oath of Druids that, was printed recently in like a commander set or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, like, they're it's, super it's, cheap. It's like three bucks. But the, I, I just don't know if like, I don't, nobody's going to be like, man, I really wish I had Oath of Druids because I could do this really cool off the wall thing that nobody's ever thought of before. You're just going to put Grizzlebrand into play. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, they are definitely going to just put Grizzlebrand into play. That is true. But what if they ban Grizzlebrand? I mean, if they ban Grizzlebrand, then there's a whole conversation yeah, to be had there's... about. Like, Grizzlebrand is to every other large creature that people want to cheat into play as Luris was the three drops. Yeah. 
Well, uh, so before we go to the last card, um, Phil, is there any card that you'd like to see? Because this is a list I made up. Uh, is there any card that I was on that list that you'd like to see unbanned that I missed? Sensei's top. <laughs> well, I mean, get out of here. <laughs> we all we all know that that that's not coming off anytime soon. Uh, I, I, honestly, just give me Sensei's top at two mana. That way, uh, yeah, that, that, that's fine. No, yeah, it's a functionally me, exactly, uh, different reprint, right? <laughs> give me exactly Sensei's top at two mana, and then nobody can complain because uh, it's two mana. Okay, so this one's for the Patreon. Uh, people first off i want to thank all the uh, all of our uh patreon folks you're really helping us out with the cast we're getting better equipment our audio and video is, c- is coming together we've got video content now uh things are coming together and it, a lot of that is because of our uh, patreon supporters so uh if you're not a patreon supporter you can join us at patreon.com slash eternal dirtles and uh you know it, it's it it helps it helps phil uh he gets to do uh the parodies and stuff like that and, uh, you know, all, all in all, it just makes for a, a better podcast. So it allows yeah. us to really focus on the podcast. So I want to th- we, thank all of our Patreon supporters for that. We do hope that, like, I mean, I, I know that, like, pro- the people who listen to this podcast, probably like I do, listen to a bunch of magic podcasts. And, like, you like a lot of content creators and you want to support them. And all of them are asking, like, please help and support our Patreon. And I know that that means that, like, you're stretched thin when you yeah. want to help and support the the content that you like watching and listening to do the buck will do it we're happy with the and, buck yeah no i mean one thing that i i do hope that the people who look at our patreon or or, or that do support us or are interested in supporting us can actually see where that is going like you can yeah. see these changes i i hope that like it, it translates it doesn't just seem like you're the money is just going nowhere like we want you to see that these things are like it does translate like that stuff yeah. does translate and it does help we're not just uh asking for it for no reason like we do have ideas that we want to implement and we are implementing them and uh, we're not independently we, wealthy so we need we need money to make that happen <laughs> we, we we just hope that we you can see that like the the your support does translate into improvements that hopefully you enjoy and that's and, why we uh, want to unban necropotence and that's why we need to talk about necropotence. Yeah, we need to talk. We talk this is for our top tier patrons. I think these are the twenty-five dollar a month patrons or ten dollar a month Dude, patrons. Can, 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 do you remember what was was it in the dojo that this card was ranked like an F? When it this was out? ranked as an as a one star in one star. Inquest magazine right after Inquest. it came out. Inquest, Inquest magazine. Inquest, yeah. So let's talk, let, Phil. What is what does necropotence do? Necropotence is a three mana enchantment for black, black, black. It says skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. It says pay one life, exile the top card of your library face down. Put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. Now, here's one thing I want to know, Zach. Yeah. Has there ever been a card that has offered you to trade life for cards that has been playable? Asmodeus? <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty much it, right? So, no, I have uh, to say. I think yeah, it's going to come off and it's safe. Yeah, no, I think this card's safe. Um, here's the thing. I, every time, every time I talk about this and we talk about it, uh, I'd say, I'd say, uh, twice, two to three times a year, I'll talk about how Necropotence needs to come off the ban list. Uh, every time people come out of the woodwork and say, but storm, right. They're like, ah, oh, storm would be so good if it could, if it could just draw I, like seven cards the next turn. But it's I'm like, say that my, my, my favorite kind of storm is but storm. Yeah. But storm. No, here's the storm. thing. Here's the thing. Uh, your cards go to the remove from the game pile, so you can't just play Storm the way you used to be playing it. Here's my here's my argument against Necropotence. Okay. You, I'm not listening. Yeah, don't listen to this. <laughs> yeah, get your must. Again, is this promoting anything that we want? I don't know. I don't think so. But I think I think I, 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 I'm up for debate. That was up for debate, dude. This is the sickest art in all of Magic: The Gathering, number one. De- debatable. <laughs> but the, the thing is, is that you kind of already do have Necropotence, man. You can already play Galvanic Relay. You can. You're allowed to still play Galvanic Relay in this format. Um, Galvanic Relay is just Necro with Storm. You know, uh, while while we're on the Galvanic Relay, like thought here i just wanted to I, I just wanted to uh say you know this is the first uh banning for popper since they took over that new that like talking to the uh the like popper no, crew they banned, they, they banned the, the 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 tron pieces 
the not the trump like the, not the actual trump pieces. I was they like, banned, did they? Like bonders, whatever, and like uh, oh, okay, and prismatic prism. You're the, you're like, right. So this is the second yeah, yeah. one, and they've unbanned something there, and I think that they that's that's Disciple very. The Vault, they banned Disciple of the Vault, and they unbanned Expedition Map. Yeah. So that's that to me se- seems great that they're actually looking at things like that crew is actually also looking at things to unban, which is why I think that they should do this for legacy. So, so discussions like this can happen in private. (laughs) Hey, look at it this way. I'll, I'll give you this. Do I think Necropotent should come off? Absolutely not. Do I think it's healthy, safe, or interesting? Not really, but I will side with you and the Pox players in this position. Hey, Pox players, Dark Ritual into Necro and leave fucking mind twist on the ban list. Yes. Get that shit out of my face. Oh my god. Well played. That's a good callback to an earlier joke, folks. That's how podcasting works. <laughs> um yeah, so I think I think that's it for, for this week. Um thanks everyone for watching. Uh thanks for listening. Uh remember, check out Moxfield. Uh if you if you want to help out with the with the podcast, you can subscribe to Patreon. We've got some merch. Check out the merch oh, yeah. below. Look oh, yeah. at this. Merch, look at this sweet backpack, man. That merch is real nice. I, right? I do enjoy sweet this merch. backpack. I've got I've got a coffee mug now. Come on, you're, like you're gonna carry so many dice bags in your fanny pack. Oh my god, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I, the fanny pack is somewhere else. I don't know where the fanny pack is. Where's well, that? Let me just say it's, it's have, around somewhere. I, it's over there. I had a great time. Yeah, <laughs> this was good. Um, all right, so uh, hey. Everybody, we'll see you next week uh, on Monday. And uh, Phil, have a good man. Later on. Hey, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out this other video. And if you can, please support us on Patreon.com.